<laughs> Monica from Detroit, Michigan, WLQV is the station. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for taking my sure, call. Sure, sure. You know what? I am too emotionally attached to my mother. Oh. And I need to know how do you, oh, I don't know, how do you stop that? I mean, she just was put into a nursing home two months ago by an emergency room doctor. Mm, okay. Saying that the caregivers did not, were not thinking enough of her. Okay. And all I can do is just, I'm there constantly. Mm -hmm. And what does constantly life, look I like? Have, what does constantly look like? Well, if I'm not present, I go almost every day to see her, but I have tried to back off, and so I'll go maybe only one hour or two hours. Only two hours every day? Well, I try to go only every other day, but sometimes that doesn't work. Are, are you saying you're only emotion? sound? I mean, yeah. it sounds like you, okay. you we'll, thought that we'll deal with a lot. it we'll right after this. She thinks she might be too emotionally attached to her mother. Now, Monica, is there anything that you feel guilty about concerning your mom and your relationship with her? Well, I have always she's always been like my best buddy as far as talking to her when I was growing up, and then I moved out of state for about ten years, and I would run up. Two hundred dollars on the phone, talking to her, mm -hmm. and then I married, had a baby, and then we ended up moving back to the state where she w is, and I basically started taking care of her, mm -hmm. and was with her all the time. Well, I'm just asking: Did, did you feel guilty, guilty about leaving the state? Did you feel guilty about that, or? No. no. Well, you know, I feel like did she I tell was you you were friends with her than my siblings. Okay. Did you did she ever hint that you were leaving her, as she, or was she happy for you to to go? She was happy for Good. me to leave. Great. She was happy for me to leave, but I just I feel as though it's just that I can't except the fact that she's in the nursing home now, and I feel like my my siblings can move on and can accept it, or I feel like this is a horrible thing that's happened, although now that she's there, your mind starts to, her mind has started to deteriorate. Yeah, but she wasn't getting adequate care at the house. Right. So now she's getting adequate care, and some of the things that happen when you, you move into a nursing home they parallel what happens when you get older and and sometimes it takes a, a while to get adjusted to the new environment so i'm having a hard time with you feel bad about her being in the nursing home and you go visit her for an hour or two sometimes every day sometimes every other day i think that's a very nice thing to do but okay. that's a lot and and you and when you introduced it you said only like only two hours was not very much and i'm thinking who who has time to do that i mean that's a lot do you and have it doesn't girlfriend? register in your mind as a lot yeah. oh well see uh for the past like 10 15 years i would go over and take her shopping or do whatever she wanted as far as correspondence or anything i would be there for five hours that's wow. a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Now, so that's now, a lot, and I would have to say to her, you know what, I can't do this. I'm too tired, and now I'm not going to be able to go home and take care of okay. the things I need to do. Okay. So, you so what's need your to, question? Yeah, what is the question? How do you get over that? How do you, you know, get to a place like my... How do you, how do you set a limit, maybe, or a boundary on maybe, how much time that's there and feel good about it? How do you mentally stop your brain from going into a panic mm -hmm. what are you panicked about you scared what well she's gonna feel lonely i think i can take care of her better than anybody else well you probably could maybe if she doesn't need medical care but that's that's let, let's back up for a moment okay i think the way that you do this 
is you have to take a almost like a pie chart of your life. Yeah. Okay? And God has put you in a place in life where there are a lot of things that fall into that pie that need your attention. You've, you know, you've got other family members, you've got a calling, you've got, you know, your health, you've got your work, you, you know, there's a bunch of stuff on there. And what we do is before God, we have to allocate stewardship of time and energy of our life and where we're going to spend it. And so I think you have to make a decision Kind of like you want to honor your mother, of course. You want to make sure she's provided for, of course. But And you've done that. But that doesn't mean that you are the primary caretaker. It means that you've made arrangements for her to be taken care of. And then you give the appropriate amount of time. And that's what everybody has to do throughout life anyway. So I think you've got to decide that on a principle basis, not an emotional basis. Because mm-hmm. your emotions, it sounds like, get pretty subjective about... It, you know, in large part, not coming to grips with the reality of what sometimes deteriorating age factors do. I mean, I and I speak from experience. My we had to put my dad in a nursing home the last or assisted living the last uh, what two or three years of his life, and I remember how gut wrenching that was and how hard it was. But the reality was, it is a part of life hmm. that we have to accept. And I hear a little difficulty inside of you accepting that. What I would encourage you to do is go get in a support group with with other people in dealing with, you know, aging parents, like even with dementia and other kinds of things. And and you begin to find out you're not the only one that struggles with that, and it'll help you. Okay. And I would add one thing that if, and that's a good suggestion, and if you're a compulsive caretaker and you've been a compulsive caretaker your whole life, then you're not going to have the pie chart Henry's talking about. You're going to lose track. But somewhere within yourself, you're going to have to look at yourself. So how much of me has been a compulsive caretaker? Because I'm giving up that role now, and there's going to be this void. And that's going to be an adjustment for you. The only thing I would add is that the whole issue is fraught (coughs) with difficulty and emotion. Absolutely. And no matter, even in the most perfect situation, there still is emotion. (coughs) You know, part of it, you're grieving the loss of your mom, too. Well, yeah. All right. 